Today, we're going to take a look at the derivative nodes ddx and ddy. Let's get started. Most of the nodes that we've looked at so far are fairly standard math operations, but ddx and ddy are anything but standard. And as you're going to see in a minute, they're very specific to the way that graphics hardware works. These two nodes provide you with a fast method, a shortcut, to find the slope or the difference between values. DDX is for finding the difference in X or horizontally, and DDY is for finding the difference vertically. So in today's video, first I'm going to explain what DDX and DDY do, and then I'm going to show you a couple of ways that we can use them in a shader. Normally, Finding a slope requires two data points. Subtracting one value from the other value gives you the difference between the two of them or, or the slope between them. But DDX and DDY take advantage of a special feature on the graphics chip that allows you to find a slope with just a single value. We generally understand the pixel shader to represent work being done on each individual pixel. And we're accustomed to the idea that all pixels are independent from other pixels or that we can't, in our current pixel, look at another pixel to see what that pixel is doing to affect what I'm doing in the current pixel. This is almost always true, except in the case of DDX and DDY nodes. See, the graphics hardware doesn't really render individual pixels like we usually believe. It renders pixels in groups of four or in two by two blocks. We can use the DDX node to ask to see the data in the pixel immediately to the right of our current pixel in screen space. And we can use the DDY node to ask to see the data immediately above the pixel currently in screen space. So if we compare the data in the neighboring pixel with our current one, we can find the difference between them and use that information for all kinds of interesting things. So DDX and DDY break the typical mold of our pixel shader, focusing only on a single pixel, and allows us to get slope values that we wouldn't otherwise have. So uh, why would I need uh, slope values like this? Well, let's take a look at a couple of practical examples of how we can use this technique in a shader. So in this first example, we're going to use DDX and DDY uh, to create the normals for the faces of our model. In this case, we're not going to use the vertex normals that the model already has, but instead we're going to calculate or create our own normals using DDX and DDY. So this type of effect might be useful for something like foliage, for example, where if you've bent the vertex normals up, on your foliage cards uh, to get better lighting on the foliage, but you still need accurate face normals to fade out the full to, to fade out the cards of the foliage uh, when they're edge on to the camera. I, I have another video that goes over this technique in more detail, and I'll put it in the card or the link right here in the upper right if you want to click on that and go get more details. So first, I'm going to find the horizontal and vertical slopes by passing the world position into DDX and DDY. The result of DDX is a horizontal vector that's parallel with the surface of the model. And the result of DDY is a vertical vector that's also parallel with the surface. If I then find the cross product between these two vectors, the result is a world space normal. Now, if I want to take that value and pass it into the normal socket on the root uh, or on the master stack, the normal socket here takes the tangent space normal. And so I have to use the transform node to convert uh, my world space normal into tangent space. So here you can see I've got it set from world uh, for the source space and tangent for the target space. And then I pass that value into the input normal and tangent space 
on my master stack. And you can see now that I've got this faceted looking sphere model. So all of the normals here, instead of using the vertex normal, like I said, I'm actually computing the normals for the individual faces by measuring the slope of DDX and DDY, and then getting the cross, cross product uh, to find the normal of each face. Now this could be useful, like I said, if you're doing foliage or <laughs> if you wanted a disco ball, for example, uh, or in other cases where you've done something odd to uh, the vertex normals, but you still need accurate face normals, uh, you can use the DDX and DDY to compute face normals like this. And if we switch over to Unreal, you can see that I've done the same thing here. I have my world position and I'm passing it into DDX and DDY, taking the cross product and then transforming from world space to tangent space. And I can pass that into my normal socket on my root node. And again, I've got my fancy disco ball because I'm computing uh, the face normals instead of using the smooth vertex normals. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this next example, we're gonna create a simple shader that projects a latitude and longitude texture onto our model. Latitude and longitude, or lat long for short, is a popular format for high dynamic range textures. So uh, this texture in this example is, uh, you can kind of get an idea for what they look like. And you can find more textures like this on the internet just by simply doing a, a Google image search for lat long texture. So I can create a simple shader that makes it look like my model is reflecting the environment in the lat long texture like this. First, I start off with uh, the pixel normal in world space. And then I pass my normal into the reflection vector node to, uh, to calculate the reflection vector. Then I pass the reflection vector into the long lat to UV, which generates the UVs for sampling my latitude and longitude map. And then I use my texture sample node to sample my latitude, longitude, texture, and then pass it into base color and emissive color. And if you take a look here at my sphere, you can see that uh, this shader does a pretty good job of applying my latitude, longitude, texture to my model in such a way that it looks like my model is reflecting the environment around it. And that's pretty cool, except there is one major problem with this technique. And let me see if I can find it here really quick. Yep, yeah, there it is. I'll just zoom in here. If you can see right here, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but uh, I'm gonna zoom in to make this a little bit more apparent. There's, there's a one pixel wide seam right here where the texture wraps around and one side meets the other. Let's switch over to the sphere and see if it's a little more obvious. Yeah, if I zoom in here, Right there, you can see that there's this one pixel wide, um, I'm gonna call it a glitch or an artifact. Uh, and it's always one pixel wide, uh, no matter where I turn. Uh, so you can see it right here along that seam. And it just looks like something is broken with, uh, with the way that the texture is projected. Now, the reason for that is that because I'm doing all of this math to wrap the texture around my model, right here on this border, there's a discontinuity. My texture sample node is computing which level of MIP map I should be sampling for my texture. But right here, my texture coordinate jumps instantly from zero to one. And so right there on that border or on that seam, the texture sampler doesn't know what to do with my MIP maps, and so I end up with this ugly looking scene. Now there is a really easy way to fix this in Unreal. So what I need to do is change the way that my texture sampler is calculating what MIP map to select. If I come over here to the settings on my texture sampler under MIP value mode, 
and I drop this down, you can see that there's this entry here called derivative, and it says explicit derivative to compute MIP level. And so like I said, the reason this artifact is happening is because uh, the texture sampler doesn't know what MIP level to sample right there on that seam. So if I switch this from none to derivative, uh, you can see, well, first of all, there's an error, but on my texture sampler node, there are now two additional input ports for DDX and DDY of the UVs. So if I take my texture coordinates and I pass them into DDX and DDY, and then pass the results of these into my texture sampler, just like magic, uh, that seam that I had before is now gone. Because instead of allowing my texture sampler to automatically uh, compute the MIP level um, based on these UVs, this, this crazy math that I'm doing, I'm explicitly giving it DDX and DDY values of my texture coordinates, which are contiguous along the model, uh, instead of having that zero to one discontinuity like I had before. So using the derivative, explicit derivative to compute MIP level, uh, I'm able to pass in my derivatives of my texture coordinate to the texture sample, and it gets rid of that seam that I had in my latitude longitude projection. Pretty cool. Uh, I can use this same technique if I'm computing uh, polar coordinates, for example, if I'm wrapping my UVs uh, around the Y axis so they go in a circle, uh, I get that same seam um, unless I use this uh, derivative me method uh, for MIP value mode. Now, if you're writing HLSL, uh, this is, is the equivalent of using the texture 2D gradient uh, texture sample. So we can use DDX and DDY uh, to fix that seam and give us a really nice projection. I do have one last example that I wanna show you today. This one is a little bit more complex and I don't intend to show you exactly how all of the nodes work, but I do want to show you that it is possible. So we're gonna switch over here to test bump map and uh, right away you can see, wow, there's a ton of nodes. But my point in showing this example is to show that you can take a bump map, which is a black and white map where black means low and white means high. And with just a single sample of that bump map, you can convert that single sample into a normal to pass into the normal socket of, uh, of the root node. Um, so basically what we're doing here is using these DDX and DDY nodes to figure out what the slope of the surface is um, based on this height map texture. And you can see there's quite a bit of math involved, um, but if we weren't using this method, the, what we would need to do instead is to sample this bump map texture three or four times to calculate the normal, and that would be significantly more expensive. So using DDX and DDY, we're able to do a bit of math to take a shortcut to figuring out what the bump map is doing to the surface normal of our surface here. Now, luckily for us, we don't have to create all of these nodes every time we want to use this technique uh, because Unreal has a node built in uh, that does this for us. It's called Perturb Normal LQ, and that LQ stands for low quality. <laughs> you can see over here on the surface of my mesh that uh, it is fairly low quality. I've got these kind of blocky looking artifacts, uh, and it doesn't look that great, and that's because the DDX and DDY technique is fairly limited in the data that it can retrieve from the cache. It can only sample the pixel right next door to the one that we uh, are currently looking at. And so I'm not able to filter these results or, or get high quality, um, but it is something that works in a pinch or if we need a technique uh, that's really uh, fast without having to do multiple samples of our bump map. Perturb normal low quality uh, does not show up in the standard menu. You can see there's this uh, perturb normal high quality node there, 
um, but that one is a little bit more expensive. If you want Perturb Normal LQ, you need to come to the content drawer uh, under engine content and then scroll down to functions, engine material functions three, and then in procedurals, and you can see there's our Perturb Normal low quality. And you can just grab that guy and drag it right in uh, to use that in your shader if you want to. So Perturb Normal low quality is doing the same thing that all of these nodes are doing. So I can just take the result of that and wire it into my transform vector node here. This is because the output of the Perturb Normal LQ is a world space normal and my root node needs that normal to be in tangent space. So I'm gonna transform from world space to tangent space here. And then uh, the other thing that I need to do is to bump up the contrast or the strength of that normal value. If I just wire this directly into my normal socket, you can see that my normals are extremely soft and you can barely see them. And so I'm using this flatten normal node to strengthen up my results uh, and get some, some, some beefier looking results. So again, uh, using the DDX and DDY shortcuts, I'm able to do a single sample of my height map texture and generate a normal from that. That's pretty cool. You might be able to use that technique uh, if you need a super cheap way uh, to use a single channel for some bump map detail where you don't want to pay for two or three channels for a normal map. All right, let's take a look at the same thing in Unity. So here we are in Unity and I've got that same bump map that you can see that I was using in Unreal. And in, in Unity, I can use this node called uh, Normal From Height. Uh, that's default with the program. And it's doing the same thing that um, the perturbed normal LQ node was doing. Uh, but here you can see there's this handy little uh, strength input where I can control how strong the effect is. Uh, the default value is 0 0.01 and that gives me a really soft normal. Uh, but if I do 0 0.08, uh, I get something that's maybe a little bit closer to what I wanted. Again, just like in Unreal, uh, the result here is fairly low quality. I get a lot of chunky artifacts. Um, but that's because of the limitations, again, of using that uh, DDX and DDY uh, cache on the graphics chip. So I'm fairly limited in uh, the smoothness of it, um, but it's also really inexpensive because it's just a single texture sample. Uh, whereas if I was converting a bump map in another way, I might use uh, three or four texture samples uh, for the same thing. Okay, uh, I hope that was helpful, that you learned a little bit about DDX and DDY and how to use them. Once again, we took a look at examples uh, generating uh, face normals, of uh, creating the UV coordinates for a latitude and longitude map, and then finally uh, doing a bump mapping with only a single sample. So I hope this has been useful uh, and that you've learned a couple of new ways of using the DDX and DDY nodes uh, to calculate slopes and, and derivatives. Anyway, uh, based on the, the poll that I sent out, it looks like we're, next week we're gonna be talking about uh, sine and cosine. So be, be sure to come back for next week's video. Uh, if you liked this one, please could you give it a thumbs up? That would help me out. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week. Thanks for watching.